they're never satisfied because they're always afraid that they're not good enough. So I need to get to the next and the next level and the next level is it's always endless. So I see ENTPs always like running behind something that they never reach. Yeah, I, I, I can see that as well. But what I see is a lot of time is ENTPs, they're always comparing themselves to other people. They're looking at, okay, but uh, that person is out there and doing this, and that person is having this career, and that sounds really interesting, and I would like to do that too. And that's, uh, yeah, why many ENTPs, they can get very distracted with what uh, passion to choose and which project to devote themselves to. Hey everyone, it's Eric Dorr here, and I'm joined here today by Mindy from uh, Channel Mindivalism. Uh, today we are going to talk about the 16 personalities and we're going to talk about what the 16 personalities need to let go of. So what do you, should you stop worrying about? What is it that you find yourself constantly anxious about? What is it you second guess about yourself? I mean, I think the goal of uh, 16 personalities is to teach people self-acceptance and to help people appreciate themselves better. And I see a lot of people, they don't really do that. So yeah, I hope that today uh, we are going to be able to Ah, challenge that a little bit and uh, get you guys thinking. Now, first of all, I want uh, to introduce you all to Mindy. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel? Yeah, sure. Um, so, hi, I'm Mindy. Uh, my channel is Mindy Malist, and on my channel, I talk about, of course, personality types, typology. But it's not only about that. I call my channel a place for growth. So I talk about self-development tools and also some, um, yeah, tools just to live a better life in general. That's really cool. Yeah, I've been really enjoying um, in this channel and you'll see a link down in the description as well so you can see all her videos and she makes some really good videos about ENFPs and INTJs. So if you're interested in that kind of content, yeah, she has a lot to offer. Now, uh, first of all, I wanted to start with the talking about the different 16 personalities. Uh, I want to start with the ESFJ personality type. So yeah. uh, what would you say that ESFJs uh, should be uh, letting go of? ESFJ, I think um, they should let go of criticism. Um, I think they can be sometimes big on criticizing other people. And sometimes it's not about like, deep stuff is more about like the looks you know the kind of shoes they're wearing they're not clean enough it's not like a whatever good combination of colors i mean who cares you could be using your energy on all more interesting or important things for yourself of course that's maybe fun for you to do esfj sometimes um for fun but um my question for you esfj would be like is that serving you is that like is that a right usage of your energy like that's, that's what I think. Yeah, like what I see with ESFJs is that they sometimes tend to worry about how other people see them. And uh, I think that's, that, that's what can get them to be a bit critical of other people as well, yeah. because they worry that they are being judged by others and that can get them to uh, judge others in return. Sometimes people have that mentality, strike first before somebody strikes you. Yeah, it makes um, total sense. What you're saying with what I'm saying sounds like the, the two sides of one coin. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so well, what would you think about the uh, INTP personality type then? Well, I think they can let go of friendships that don't add up much into their lives. That's an interesting one. Would you elaborate? Um, yeah, I have seen that INTPs can have a hard time letting go of some people that are not bringing into their lives much and actually they're causing a lot of problem. But I think it's their tertiary extroverted feeling, which makes them kind of hold on to other people, not because they want to hold on to, but because they don't want them to feel rejected or something like that. So they can uh, stick to people that it's not that good for them for maybe too long or sometimes forever. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> the inferior function of the INTP personality type, extroverted feeling, uh, I guess that's what you meant. Uh, they, uh, it can cause them to worry about how other people see them and uh, I, sometimes what I see with INTPs uh, is uh, what you call uh, uh, fake friendliness or fake positivity or a forced positivity uh, where it's like INTPs feel like they're not allowed to uh, ask questions or to uh, uh, speak their mind freely because uh, they're afraid of the social judgment if they talk about what's on their mind and what's really going on. And yeah, I, I find I always appreciate INTPs the most when they can speak frankly about what it is they care about and when they worry less about what, how they appear when they do it. Yeah. 
Oh, sorry, I said tertiary function. I meant inferior function. Yeah, yeah, I thought that's so, yeah. <laughs> it's an easy thing to trip over the cognitive functions. Yeah, yeah, but I, I agree with you, and uh, it's funny because we both kind of made our own notes on what each personality type should work on without looking at each other, and we kind of overlapped yeah. quite a few times. <laughs> we do, don't. <laughs> yeah. I think that's funny. Yeah. Uh, I guess we could move on to the ENTJ personality type in that case. Uh, how would you see it for ENTJs? Well, I think that because they're so fixated on um, productivity and efficiency, that's the favorite word of ENTJs, yeah. um, I think they forget sometimes or rather often what is it, what they actually want mm. and what is important for me, what do I need, and they go for what is more efficient in my life, but sometimes that's not the best for them or that's not what they need. Mm. So I think they should let go of that efficiency uh, when not all the time, because that's the core of who they are, of course, they cannot yeah. change that. Yeah. Uh, but be careful and sometimes you need to let it go uh, because you need to listen to yourself and you want to yeah, be good to yourself, basically. I like that one a lot. Uh, I came at it from a bit of a different perspective. What I've uh, thought for ENTJs uh, is uh, that ENTJs, they, they always choose these really impossible quests and campaigns. They're really attracted to those really impossible challenges. Like uh, They like to make things difficult for themselves. And I think sometimes when they are in the heat of that and they're pursuing what it is that their goal is, uh, they can feel like it's okay, this is very unrealistic and am I ever going to reach this? And should I, should I have made it easier for myself? Should I have um, just chosen the simple path? Should I just have done what everyone else is doing? And I would say like the greatest gift of the ENTJ is to uh, persevere and uh, in their originality, uh, like to push through and to uh, really uh, try to be their best version of themselves. That's what I find the most cool about the ENTJs. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I uh, wanted to flip that again to ISFPs. Uh, <laughs> you end up having the first word here. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, maybe I can take this one as well. Uh, uh, sure. And you can take the second round. Yeah. Uh, the way I see it with ISFPs is uh, ISFPs have really mastered that art of, you know, the simple life and the easy life and, uh, you know, enjoying the small things in life. Like uh, I, si I find that the ISFPs, they can really immerse themselves in just the day-to-day -day routines, you know, the spontaneity, things they can do in the moment, just uh, uh, relaxing, just uh, having a, a good time with friends. But sometimes there can be this worry about like, should I be doing more with my life? Like uh, uh, my parents always wanted me to have to, to do this or to have, like be uh, more driven or be more ambitious. And I think uh, if you are enjoying life and if you are uh, feeling good about what you do, that's the most important thing. So that's something I think they should let go of. Wow, yeah, that, I like that. But that also reminds me of uh, the ENFPs. And that makes sense because their dominant function and inferior functions are the same, but flips over, right? Um, yeah, and, and you know, questioning, okay, should I let go of this? and uh, and, and that's kind of the, the N, inferior any, I would think, uh, of, the, um, of the ISFP. Yeah. 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 Well, what do I think of ISFP? What they can let go of? I think they can let go of, <laughs> maybe this is a bit too shallow, but <laughs> of talking too much about themselves. I think they sometimes or kind of often do that and that makes sense right when you're someone who is like very immersed in your own world and in your own uh, crafts and uh, you're like like just doing your own thing then they tend to what that's what I have seen uh, to not be that worried or concerned about what the other person is saying they would say okay uh, the other person would share something oh yeah because I also did that and because I love that and because and it's it's sometimes sometimes I what I don't want to say all ISFPs and you can comment and say uh, if you disagree <laughs> I would love to read that uh, but sometimes they can uh, yeah be too self-centered and I think they can let go of that um, because other people also want to feel like you are interested in them yeah, I think a good rule there is like it's fine to uh, have yourself as a starting point and look at okay, what is it, is it I want and what how do I feel about this? But always like try to press the uh, tread on to the other person afterwards. Like start with yourself, that's fine. 
but go back to the other person. So how do you feel about that? And how do you relate to that? Try to involve other people in your life and your experiences. And, yeah, don't yeah. always like use the story of the other to focus on your own story, but okay, maybe use uh, your story to develop more into like their, like put them in the spotlight, like an INF, ENF, ENFJ would do. Yeah, that's a cool <laughs> trick. Now, a completely different type, uh, the ENTP personality type. Uh, what would you say is uh, the main thing uh, ENTPs should uh, let go of? Um, the idea of never being good enough. Um, I think they tend to be in this uh, constant um, like run when they are trying to pursue their best version, but not only because of the sake of becoming a, best ver a better ver version of themselves, but because they feel they are not good enough. Like they're never, and, and even when they reach the next point, they're never satisfied because they're always afraid that they're not good enough. So I need to get to the next and the next level and the next level is it's always endless. So I see ENTPs always like running behind something that they never reach. Yeah. I, I, I can see that as well, but what I see is a lot of time is ENTPs, they're always comparing themselves to other people. They're looking at, okay, but uh, that person is out there and doing this, and that person is having this career, and that sounds really interesting, and I would like to do that too. And that's, uh, yeah, why many ENTPs, they can get very distracted with what uh, passion to choose and which project to devote themselves to. Now, what I see that's really interesting, I was looking at just Stephen Fry, for example, on ENTP earlier today, and he has such a broad uh, career. He has done so many different things. He's published books, he's been involved in drama, movies, he's uh, been involved in uh, talk shows and all kinds of different uh, expression. And that's what I think ENTPs, uh, yeah, they need to uh, just uh, uh, stop comparing themselves to other people and what other people are doing and just... Uh, Take one thread at a time. Just uh, where does this lead? What does this lead? Where does this go? And just focus for yourself. Okay, where am I? What am I most curious about right now? And see where that leads. I love. I like that. I like that a lot. And I think that complements what I have said. It's like that's the reason why they end up behaving the way I'm saying. Like because they do that. Because they compare to other people. In the end, they feel I'm not good enough, and and I, I never reach that that perfection or that that version of myself and that version always becomes bigger and bigger because they're always at the same time comparing themselves to more and more people mm. so yeah for sure for sure that's what i think yeah like uh, if you would flip it for the isfj something that i see for the isfj is uh, that the, they're always uh, what you say uh, they never f seem to feel like they're good enough. Like they always tend to feel like uh, uh, other people are more important and other people's uh, issues matter more. They, they're always so concerned with other people's emotions and feelings and they themselves, their own needs, their own experiences, that's never important. Uh, people don't need to know this. This is not, this, nobody cares about these things. So they always kind of put themselves in other people or how do you see it? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you and that's why I think that the, what they should let go of is that the rest is more important than themselves. Mm. Uh, I think, yeah, the rest is important, but they are also important. You, ISFJ, you are also important. Yeah. That's what I think. So, yeah, they tend to put the, the, the needs of the other people before themselves yeah. because they don't see the urgency uh, of yeah their, their own needs being mm. that important. Mm. Yeah. That's also why I see them overextending themselves so much. Like uh, they're always trying to be there for everyone and they can't meet all appointments and everything they commit to. So yeah, like they, they can really overextend themselves. Yeah, I have seen ISFJ stop doing that maybe when they are in their 40s mm. or like later in life. Yeah. Yeah, but otherwise I have seen that, yeah, this, this tends to be like their normal way of navigating life. Yeah, you're so extending yourself until you're 40 and then uh, relaxing and uh, learning to, uh, that your boundaries are important too. Yeah. Hopefully earlier. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So I feel like we have a funny one coming up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what would you say about the ISTP? Well, ISTPs, I think they can let go of, of uh, gossiping. <laughs> I think it's funny, but it's true. Um, and uh, yeah, that's quite different because they're not like the uh, the first type I mentioned, which was, was 
which one was it? ESFJ? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, criticism, right? I think that's slightly different because the ICP is not per se looking into like, okay, what are they wearing and all of that, but they just look into like details of their private life and stuff like that. And sometimes they just want to bond with people through gossiping. Mm. That I have, I have experienced that um, with different ICPs. Yeah, I know that Swedish culture has a uh, few ISTPs and what I can see is there's definitely a curiosity for what there are other people doing and what there are other people up to and just uh, I think it's uh, just a genuine like decide to understand people and what uh, different people are doing and things like that but it can come off as judgmental. Yeah, the, yeah. The, way, the thing I wrote for ISTPs that was uh, very different, uh, it was uh, social responsibility and what I meant with that is I see ISTPs so often feel like they have to be the person to fix everyone's problems in life. So uh, people, when people have problems, uh, they tend to always call the ISTP and be like, okay, can you help me with this? Uh, my car broke down or I'm struggling in my relationship. No matter what it is, it seems to be like, okay, go to the ISTP. They, they can fix it for They're you. They're reliable people. Yeah, yeah, they are. But I must be, it must also be <laughs> tiring if somebody calls you 3 a.m. in the morning and be like, can you help me with this? <laughs> like, yeah. uh, so I also understand that they, they uh, must also be able to uh, sometimes, yeah, Realize let go of that. Yeah, and be gossip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then to relax, let's gossip about other people. <laughs> okay, I don't think that gossiping in the end, like, okay, I don't think it's like fully something, something terrible. But uh, sometimes I can say I sometimes feel like, okay, this is too much. I don't need to be talking about uh, other people that much. So it's, this can be tiring for other people. I don't know if for the ICP themselves it is tiring. But um, I don't know. If you ask me, that's what I think they mm -hmm. could let go of. Yeah, for sure. That's a good advice. All excesses <laughs> are, like, you know, negative. Yeah. Yeah. So the ENFJ. The ENFJ... Um, I think they could relax more in social settings and let go of the responsibility they feel because they feel this, this almost duty that I have to entertain and I have to put them all the time in a spotlight. And, mm. and yes, I know they enjoy doing that, but sometimes it's also too much and I have seen them kind of burn out after that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like... Uh, from the other perspective, I have basically the same thing you do. Uh, it's what I see with ENFJs uh, is that they want everyone to be happy. They want everyone to be okay. And they want everyone to like them and agree with them. Yeah. So they feel a need to campaign and charm and get everyone over to their side. But yeah, if somebody is sitting there in the corner and they're not happy or they are critical or not skeptical, yeah. that, learn to be okay with that. Like, let go. Like, they, they can be that. They can have that. And you can have uh, what you have. Like, yeah. the, you don't need to have everyone on your side immediately or uh, to charm everyone all the time. Or everyone yeah. doesn't need to be happy as well. It's not your problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not your duty. No. Have you seen an ENFJ in a social setting where they are trying to charm everybody and then someone disagrees with what they're saying and they, and they go, pardon? <laughs> and they, the person repeats and they're like, okay, I, I heard it right. And um, really? They dare to say that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or they panic. They're yeah. Like, no. <laughs> no, what do yeah. I do now? <laughs> and they feel it's their fault. And now yeah. I should fix this. Why is this person not agreeing with me? Mm. Why is this creating such disharmony? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> disharmony is normal. <laughs> okay. Embrace disharmony. <laughs> So what I had for the ESTP personality was uh, that ESTPs, they need to let go of uh, needing to impress other people. I find that ESTPs often have that need to have the perfect life and to show that they have the perfect life to people and social media or in reality to always have the latest car or TV or things like that. And <laughs> that must be very stressful sometimes. Like uh, I find ESTPs to be like uh, really impressive examples many times like they have an impressive energy and uh, sometimes I think yeah just uh, you don't have to worry about <laughs> impressing other people because you are already an impressive person on your own regard yeah. your own merit yeah yeah definitely absolutely I think uh, yeah my point is is very similar they should let go of uh, trying to impress other people and please other people and I think that this need of pleasing other people comes because they don't 
they don't believe in themselves and they don't see their own worth. So they tend to, I don't know, be too available mm. or do um, everything that's been asked from them mm. uh, yeah, for, from other people because, yeah, they're, they're afraid that in the end they're not good enough. It's interesting that you also connected to needing to please other people. It's not something I hear a lot about people say about these TPs. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, maybe they don't say that, but in my observations, yeah. I have noticed that they do that. And as I said, it's not always like, okay, they will uh, do like, like, like physical things, but they would uh, go and, I don't know, do a lot of things for other people and, and, you know, do every single thing that's being asked from them because they're afraid that if they don't do it, the person is, will go away because I'm not good enough. Right. That's really interesting. So what um, would you say for the INFJ? Give it to me straight. Um, I think they should let go of... I forgot. What was that again? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Not standing up for themselves. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, I think they should let go of, I don't know if you, but INFJs, <laughs> not standing up for themselves. I mm. see that they could have a hard time. Let's say if someone says uh, at work, this is what you have to do. And they don't agree because that that's not connected to their like package of responsibilities. Uh, they cannot say uh, this is not my responsibility. They can never kind of even complain about it. They would just put on and do the task and well eventually maybe they would say yes okay um mm. uh, when they're burned out when they cannot handle it anymore maybe almost at the verge of not being able to function then then they will start kind of saying uh, i think this is maybe not my responsibility but it's I, i've seen that this could be a problem do you agree or disagree uh, I think I agree, and I've heard people say this to me many times. So, oh, to you as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, usually tends to be the case is uh, if uh, I can assert myself pretty well uh, in certain situations, but I can also give up a bit too easily sometimes because I can tell somebody something and I know it's right, uh, but if they disagree with it, uh, I might just yield and just let them do what they want to do. Uh, and then afterwards, they will be upset with me because I didn't assert myself stronger because they found out I was right. <laughs> and they were like, but Eric, you, why didn't you explain it better and show me <laughs> how it was? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I, I guess I didn't have the energy or I, I, because it can, be, it can be exhausting to explain yourself. And I'm, what I'm learning to do as an INFJ is... Uh, uh, that not all boundaries have to be explained. That uh, sometimes it's better to just say, uh, "No, just do that." Dot, and try not to explain it because when you start explaining it, uh, you, yeah, you get into a discussion that can take a long time and can drain. It can be very draining. Yeah, but sometimes you have to have the conversation and you have to put it into words. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes that there is no other way. Like let's say that the 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 job. Uh, like the work example I just gave, like yeah. how are you going to assert yourself without words? Mm. That's true. And uh, I think it might connect to what I wrote down for INFJs. And that's that idea that uh, you're not strong enough. I think uh, sometimes the reason why INFJs don't assert themselves might be just because of that, because they assume they don't have the energy or strength or resilience to put themselves forward in that situation. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, it's that heavy. And so a message, I guess, is, yeah, you're stronger than you think. Yeah. Yes, INFJs. You are. <laughs> so uh, what I have for the ENFPs, uh, that is uh, fear of loss. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something I see a lot with ENFPs that I talk to. And it's uh, something that can contribute to analysis, paralysis, decision-making, anxiety, and things like that. Because what I see ENFPs, they get attached very easily to things. Uh, and uh, they um, really don't like the thought of losing things. Like they hold on very tight to things. And uh, yeah, that can also be like uh, leading to overextending yourself or like trying to do everything at once because you want to hold on to everything that you got and not miss out on anything oh yeah <laughs> go and watch my channel i have a lot of videos on that i have yeah, a video yeah. of fear the fear of missing out the fomo yeah. for enfps and the decision making process actually i just posted it yesterday but yeah uh, i agree a hundred percent with you um what i have written for the enfp uh like another thing that they can let let's go of is of, of micromanaging themselves mm. 
um, they tend to be like very uh, perfectionistic uh, in the way that their thought processes work and the decision making process even like the decision making process let's say okay i am going to make a decision and these are the steps i'm going to use to make the decision or mm. i'm going to make a video and these are the steps to make the video i'm going to record and this like everything needs to be within this unrealistic expectations of sets of, of like steps sets of steps that they should I've seen fulfill this. i've seen this <laughs> and it's like just so tiring and i live with that myself every day it's like you have a like a sort of commander in your head that pushes you to do things in a particular order yeah sometimes when i listen to enfp's talk and describing their process and how they need to do things i'm like wow give yourself a break yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, like, because I have learned so much about Myers-Briggs, uh, I am like, okay, I, when I notice, because that is just like my natural way of operating, but when mm. I notice that I am too, like, fixated on the process more than on the outcome and that the process is actually not efficient, I'm like, okay, I need to let go of this. Yeah. How would I have fun? Okay, just do it that way, period. <laughs> just try to go with the flow. Yeah, exactly. So... That's my advice for ENFPs, fellows, ENFPs. <laughs> what was next? ISTJ. And then INFP. What would you say for the ISTJ? Oh, they should let go of uh, expecting the worst of people. Mm. Yeah, I think they, they are quite pessimistic people. Mm. Uh, in general and that includes also other people and why I think they should let go of this because that makes your relationships just hard um, and I have a video that I could recommend you watch and even though it's for INTJs I think this is something you have in common on my channel it's called the INTJ negativity bias right. but that could be called also the ISTJ negativity bias hmm. um, I think it can affect uh, your relationships when you are expecting always the worst because there is always a part of the person that is not 100% uh, negative there is a 50 50 chance I always say so why would you focus on the 50% negative when the possibility says that there is a 50% positive yeah I as know. well yeah like what I had for the ISTJ was that they have a fear of letting people down uh, and what I see is I have an ISTJ friend for example and I could see him like pulling hours in the evening working overtime even though it's unpaid for no reason I could see him uh, constantly over planning and over preparing and feeling like he needed to constantly have it all together and uh, that's uh, like need to always have everything together and plan for every eventuality and uh, uh, yeah like fear of chaos in a sense that's that's probably what they need to let go of yeah. just uh, embrace uh, the chaos <laughs> not, not necessarily embrace it but just uh, focus your control on what you can control just uh, uh, have a place where you have control and where you have full confidence and learn to let go of everything else around there like, I like that. It, as long as you have control over yourself and what you are responsible for um, that's the most important thing yeah I like that I have seen that ICJs who are like more loose of that control they do what you just said like they have a lot of control and in their houses for instance the house is so neat everything is just in their place I right? you take a cup you put it in the same place and blah 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 um, and maybe with their works but then um, with other aspects of their like social life, sports, they're more like relaxed. And yeah, I think that can help. I think that's important. Good point. I like that. What was next? INFP and then ESTJ. <laughs> <laughs> so um, many of my viewers are INFPs. It's uh, probably the group that watches the most. What advice would you give for INFPs? Hello, INFPs. <laughs> um, I think INFPs should let go of suffering for things that you don't want to do. And what I mean with this is like INFPs want to do a lot of things. You know, they want to write this beautiful song and make this movie. But at the same time, they don't want to do it. Right. Mm. So um, it's nice that you want to do it. And it's nice that you in the end don't do it but don't suffer for it that's how i see it right. so you either do it or it, sorry maybe this is too pragmatic but i think um 
you either do it or you either don't do it and don't suffer for it. So uh, <laughs> if you are not going to do it, don't suffer about not doing it, I guess. That's, yeah. yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Because, I mean, yes, what I always say for INFPs is you want to do something, you don't need to make the full, like you want to write a song. You don't need to write a song like in a weekend, but at least write a sentence today, you know, and at mm. least you're... Uh, uh, or you brainstorm today, tomorrow you write a sentence and the next week maybe another sentence, but you're still like you're working towards something instead of just holding it in your head. And when you hold it in your head, you start suffering because you're not doing it, because it's not happening, because I'm lazy, because, of, you know, there is a lot of uh, like trauma, a lot of trauma, drama and suffering that I think uh, it's unnecessary and you can remove the suffering by doing small steps. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, what I had for INFPs and the message that I'm constantly trying to get down to INFPs, uh, uh, it's uh, let go of imposter syndrome. That's, uh, oh, yeah. uh, that idea that you're not uh, worthy, that you're not strong enough, uh, not good enough, that you, uh, yeah, that uh, other people are, can do it much better than you can, or why should I get into music? There are so many talented musicians, or why should I get into art, or why should I do anything, you know? Uh, what you have to understand is you're worthy because you are you. Like the, the value of what you do and your musical expression or your creative expression is the value that you put into it. Uh, because if you're able to be yourself in your work and reveal yourself in your feelings and thoughts, that's what gives it value. That's what makes it resonate with people. Uh, so it's not about being uh, the most talented. Uh, it's about being able to put your worth and your values and your feelings into something you do and to do it with intention and effort. Yeah, and I think, yes, it's about being your more talented you, not your more talented compared to other people. So mm. let your, if you're the, your most talented version of yourself, it means that you let your talent come out and you explore it, but not... Uh, while comparing it to what other people is doing it and their talents but you know you mm. only compare it to yourself so you let yourself explore that mm. that's what i think yeah definitely what i have what i have for estjs that's an interesting one i think and that is that idea that everyone is against you like something i see estjs have very often is that oh, uh, I, I made this decision, but now I'm going to have to explain it. And now I'm going to have to get everyone to board with it. And uh, I, how do I make them see my point of view? Like, I think ESTJs, they can find it very, like they, they can feel like they're constantly in a kind of fight position where they have to constantly assert themselves and uh, that their way is right. And that, like, that can make them very confrontational in a sense, like unnecessarily so. Because if you go in assuming that people are going to be your opponents from the get-go, uh, that means often you create the enemies yeah that you don't want to have in the first place yeah oh that's interesting i have something um slightly different and that is that they come they should let go of conforming to the status quo mm. because i can see that estjs have this um this also tendency to use intuition also a lot that they have extroverted intuition tertiary. yeah they do um, so they can be quite imaginative and playful and they want to do a lot of things, but always the status quo seems to be stronger in them. So they, even though they want to do some things, some important things, they would just stick to what is the right thing to do, how or what society expects from me. And yes, they can still break a little bit of those rules and maybe instead of being that stiff, they would go a, go a little bit loose, but they would not let completely go of this status quo and move on to what um what their uh, dreams are telling them i mean it seems to be a bit so somehow in my opinion a bit of a struggle yeah i mean everyone everyone has their ultimate mission for every personality type is to be authentic to be the most authentic version of yourself and to do what it is you are most passionate about. And uh, sometimes the way of other people is not the way of the ESTJ. Like sometimes ESTJs, they have something inside of them. Everyone has something inside of them that is important to them. So you have to make sure that you have that compass straight and that you are doing something and putting your energy into something that means something to you. Yeah, absolutely. And now we only have two types left, I think. Yeah, what are those? Uh, we have the ESF, uh, ESFP. 
Oh, the ESFP. We're letting INTJs to the last. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> That's half of my audience. <laughs> um. What would you say that ESFPs need to let go of? Um, they need to let go of being uh, extremely politically correct. Huh. Yeah, I think they have this thing for... Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand because I would say it's like FE, but no, that's not FE, probably it's FI. So they try to agree with things or they are sometimes not capable of saying, I disagree with this. They would say things like, okay, I see, I understand, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then would put their truth somehow, like not up front. They would make it to the side because they don't want somehow to break the harmony it's weird because if i would be talking about an infj i would feel very free to say you know harmony but somehow it feels to me like they try to be politically correct and sometimes that cuts off their own freedom and they don't feel like they can be fully authentic because they're trying to at the same time like hold this politically correct uh, communication environment and uh yeah it's not something I've actually ever thought about. Like uh, sometimes uh, I've seen that ESFPs, uh, and they are of course introverted feeling and extroverted thinking types. Uh, so they can put themselves in positions where they uh, champion morals and values that put them in the center of the spotlight. Uh, uh, but I think you might have a point that sometimes they choose the easy fights. They choose the simple battles, the things that uh, everyone is already on board with. But that's because of the political correctness. Hmm. Po political correctness, yeah. Right. That, that's, that's what I think it is about. But I might be wrong, so I'm always open to other people telling me you're wrong. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's what I've noticed. Yeah, like what came to me for the ESFP was... Uh, um, what they have to uh, let go of is that idea that you have to always uh, be positive uh, and uh, look like you're doing great, like you're always happy, like you're always uh, uh, living the dream life and uh, having so much fun. Yeah. Uh, it's okay that sometimes you're not, like sometimes uh, uh, you have a shitty day, sometimes uh, things aren't great and you aren't uh, uh, perfectly uh, uh, pretty or presentable to the world as your ideal self. So I think also being okay with uh, being angry or annoyed or irritated or tired or like all those things yeah yeah I like that it's like letting go of perfection basically yeah yeah for sure for sure a form of perfection for sure yeah we all express a form of perfectionism in them I think. in our own ways yeah we do yeah, yeah. and now we're down to the um, last uh, type and that you're kind of the champion of INTJs in your channel <laughs> I've seen that uh, uh, what advice do you give INTJs why do you think so many INTJs come and watch your channel um, sorry why do I think they come and watch my channel yeah uh, because I think they feel understood by me mm. and they think I have a, a pretty good idea of how to work and mm. the advices I give to them it seems to be of value for them right yeah and uh, what do you think INTJs need to let go of? Um, I think they could let go of the ideal they have that they should be perfect or they could mm. perfection their strategies and whatever they're doing before they start anything because they could not start anything altogether ever if they continue you know, to, to aim for this ultra perfection. Right. Uh, and I, I see this as well. I see INTJs there. Sometimes they're like the perfect human beings. Like uh, sometimes I see them as like the most uh, well-polished speakers, like the people that are able to be the most like succinct, like the most best at composing a message or the best at like executing a task or like the like true experts in a sense, in applied expertise almost. Uh, but what I also see is a lot of INTJs have this feeling like, yeah, what's the point? I'm never going to make it. Like that's like that. Uh, what I think INTJs need to let go of is that uh, feeling like, oh, uh, I'm not going to make it. Like it's not going to work out. Like uh, my ideals, they're too complicated. What I want, my goals, they're, um, yeah, people will never understand it. What I want to do, they will never uh, see how, what I can do, what, what's possible. Uh, people will be against me or stop me or things will get in my way. Like yeah. that, that, 
those feelings I see. Yeah. I think it's one step, what you just said is one step after. Like first they do what I say, okay, I, I want to become a, a, a more uh, a expert, more of an expert in this field, I need to become better, blah, 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 blah. And because the, the, the goal is a particular very high goal, right? But I'm never good for that goal. And even though I'm working for that to become a better version and never reach that point, then I reach a point when I'm like, yeah, I'm never going to do it. It's never, I'm never going to be good enough for that. No, it's true. <laughs> it's really true. Yeah. I think that that's, uh, yeah. So the funniest thing happened and just at the end, uh, the battery uh, went out. So yeah. <laughs> that was uh, an amazing timing. Uh, anyways, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for inviting me over here to record with you and uh, uh, for being here on my channel. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. And I want to say to everyone, if you want to see Mindy on my channel again, do leave a like and comment down below. And yeah, maybe we can do another cool video together. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And you will be on my channel again, right? I hope so. Yes. <laughs> cool. <laughs>